Hi, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Center Stage with me, David Nairn, Artistic Director here at Theatre Orangeville. We are going to have all kinds of fabulous guests for you over the course of the next, the next while. Stars of the show, writers, backstage crew, office staff. You're going to get all the inside scoop on what it is to be Center Stage here at Theatre Orangeville. This week, I am really thrilled to have a very, 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 very special guest with me today, the incomparable Lisa Way, the star, or one of the stars, of Rock and Roll is Here to Stay. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. Now, the show is called Center Stage, but we're not quite sitting at Center Stage, so are you okay if I move I my stool sure over? I sure am. I think okay. you should. Why don't I come a little uh, closer <laughs> to Center Stage? Now, of course, in full disclosure, Lisa and I have been living in the same bubble for almost 30 years now, right? Yes. So I think we're this okay. Is, this is all right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you back on the stage. It's on been a little while. On this gorgeous set. It's wonderful. I know, this on great set. set. For, yeah, for more confessions. But yeah. it's, been a, it's been a while now since you've been on this stage. We were actually, the show just before this all hit, this, right. this little pause, you had just opened a play that had, I don't know, three shows, three performances We did three before. performances, yeah. And yeah. we were lucky that we were the show that got the whole run in before everything and shut down. And that was down. the Gordon Lightfoot show. That was uh, early morning rain. Yeah. And what a, what a gift that was to be on this gorgeous stage in this beautiful theater and to be doing the world premiere of that show. And we have not done that show since. Well, maybe we'll have to get it back again soon uh, sometime. Maybe. Now, if my memory serves, because my memory is a little bit suspect, as only you know, only too well. <laughs> yes. It seems to me that it was 16 years ago that you stood on this stage mm -hmm. and for the first time sang Patsy Cline in A Closer Walk with Patsy Cline. This set would have been appropriate Yeah, exactly. I, I love it, with the cow. Uh, not the first me. time, not the first time you performed on this stage, but the first right. time that you had shared that kind of musical presentation with us, one of your concerts. Mm -hmm. and. Since then, and then uh, was it a year later that you started putting together your own shows? It was. It was Theatre Orangeville that inspired me to start creating my own concerts. And it was A uh, Closer Walk with Patsy Cline. And after that, uh, the following year, I put together my own Patsy Cline show. Because, of course, in A Closer Walk, it's a brilliant show. But Patsy doesn't say anything. She just comes out and sings right. the song. She's, she speaks very little. And I had, as an actor, of course, done my hours and hours of diving into the deep hole of the internet and finding all of the information I could about Patsy's life. And she was such an interesting person, I wanted to share that. So thanks to David's help and Theodore Orangeville's help because uh, Becky, uh, and the, the crew, Becky was there. That was- Becky Morris, yes, Becky our Becky Morris, 16 manager. years ago, that was my first time working with Becky Morris. And she is still helping me design the sets for my concerts, including Rock and Roll is Here to Stay. But that was the first time in 2006 that I did that. And that just ballooned. And of course, Theatre Orangeville has done some of my world premieres as well. Yeah. And now I have, I, I hate to say the number, but it's not number, lucky number 13. That's is, my is lucky how number. many shows that I've created. And that all began here at right. Theatre Orangeville. So, um, I mean, you know, we, we've all seen, you know, my, my personal favorite is the Peggy Lee show. Mm -hmm. And I love the right. Dolly Parton show. And all of those shows are great. But what is it about telling those stories of those people that really motivates you to, because I know the amount of time that you spend <laughs> researching, I know the amount of energy you put into the, the, to getting the right costumes and the period look and mm -hmm. your gowns and all that. What's, what's the, what, what, what turns you on about that? Well, it's interesting because when I first started, of course, it was as an excuse to get myself work. So it was the one woman show, the Peggy Lee and the Patsy Cline and the Dolly Parton. And then as I was hiring these incredible musicians who are just brilliant singers and performers in their own right, I started writing concerts that featured all of the, the fellas that I was working with. And so that's how you know the Canada show came about. Um, the British Invasion show across the pond, which was such a great success here in, in Orangeville, were to feature those performers. So in the beginning, I was writing the stories of these women that really inspired me. 
Patsy Cline, of course, and Dolly Parton were the first female singers to do so many things in this industry and, and paved the way for all of the female entertainers of today. And Peggy Lee, she, she wrote the show, she wrote the song, she you know, designed the lighting herself. She was a real wow. inspiration to me. Um, and now, these more of the compilation shows that I get to do, I think it's the fun of sharing the stories of many different artists with the audiences uh, because we all know the songs you know we sing the top rock songs of you know from the 50s and 60s to today right. uh, we try to fit in as many as we can into the two hour time that the audience will spend with us and hopefully they go home having heard some of their favorites but they also hear some stories about the bands and what was going you know, I love the story of the police um, uh, the Rolling Stones in a hotel room and uh, the knock comes at the door and somebody says the police are here the police are here so they run around shoving you know their drugs into <laughs> into suitcases <laughs> and flushing them down toilets and they open the door and it actually was the police <laughs> so Sting, Sting, Sting and the boys and the were all boys standing were at, at the, the door, door. <laughs> so they didn't have to go crazy <laughs> you know flushing those drugs down the toilet so those funny stories that people may have heard or may not have heard but it's just the fun of sharing right. and of course uh, you know after this two-year so pseudo pause we've had there there's a real electric energy that is happening you know in the times that we're lucky enough during this to get inside right. indoors with with our audiences it's it's just magical i wanted to ask you about that because for the last two years i mean i know that you know in the before times you know you were used to doing 150 160 180 performances a year yeah. and then of course the pandemic struck and that went down to virtually nothing at all mm -hmm. and then you've been solely able to come back over last year i think it was 70 or 75 times a lot of them outdoors and things mm -hmm. like that so yeah. Um, yeah. how, do you, how does that feel to be able to come <laughs> back in front of an audience when you'll be able to bring this show to, to, you know, for audiences here in the theater? Well, for those who don't know that David himself is going to be starring in a show in June oh. in Niagara area, that's my little plug for his show. Oh dear. It'll be three, three and a half, almost four years since you've been on a stage as an actor. It'll be three years since I've been on stage. Yeah, and when I'm David terrified. was, I'm when terrified. David, and when David was expressing, he said, what did you say? I'm terrified. Yes. I said, no, I said, it's like riding a bicycle. <laughs> because my band and I, when we finally got back up, you know, last year, like you said, the first year of the pandemic, we did six concerts. That's it. Uh, all, all outdoors, of course. And we were so happy to do those six concerts. <laughs> the next year, in 2021, we did over 70. And a lot of them in the fall were indoors when, when theaters felt safe about inviting their audiences indoors, fully masked, of course. And, and we had so much fun, but it was eight shows a week, and your stamina when you haven't had to do, because I, I, I read a statistic that performers who perform a two and a half hour show, when your concentration level has to be at 150% for two and a half hours, that's the same energy that most people would put out in a 10 to six work day. Wow. But condensed into two and a half hours. So to do that eight shows a week again, it did take a little bit of you know uh, conditioning. Yeah, absolutely. We need to get back up to speed because when yeah. we did, um same time next year, last fall, uh, and then you know to be in the rehearsal hall for eight hours a day, it was like, oh my goodness, I'm, exhaustion. I was exhausted at the end of. Well, I mean, as you know, I, I mean, I'd come home and just like <laughs> crash yeah. on the couch, like it was yeah. just. Again, it's just getting, but that's what fuels us, right? That's what yeah. fuels us is about is what that drive is, and and that's what I said. You know, everybody in my band who was expressing, oh, I know we're going to be so tired, and once we hit that stage, the fatigue dropped, and there was just sheer joy of number one doing what we love with people we love and with audiences at theaters that we love so right. you know, we have so, the best job in the world so rock and roll is here to stay you're here from yeah. um april 27th yes to may the 15th yes. excellent i knew this it was a team <laughs> we effort. do it yeah it was a team effort um and audiences are going to hear and see they're going to hear stories and hear music from from the 50s, from Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley and um, Chuck Berry to, through to, um, oh, uh, you know, uh, El uh, Elton John, uh, the Rolling Stones, of course. So it's all about kind of no-name bands. Led, and, yeah, Led yeah. Zeppelin, no-name bands, yeah. yeah. Uh, Freddie Mercury and Queen, yeah, one Queen. of my favorites. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a real uh, show that really features music that I think all ages and all generations will love because, of course, you know, the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin are still the most popular bands in the world. Well, 
Yes, they are, but they're yeah. not like my favorite band. What's your favorite the band? The best band in the history of the world, the Beatles, full uh, yeah. stop, period. And that's it. Done. Well, we've been watching Get Back, that wonderful <laughs> yes, documentary. Yes, I know it's fantastic, that thing and on Netflix. Again, it's a great it just series. makes me, uh, my, the wheels are turning on the next sh shows that I want to create, and something maybe with the Beatles. <laughs> I don't know. That was oh, really cool. Oh, man, only I know what that really means. <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting. I'm going to disappear down a deep, dark hole again. Lisa, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing. We're looking forward to the show. We can't, oh, you know, it's, can't it's always great. Audiences are just champing at the bit to have you back on stage. Well, and we to can't wait. Up um, dancing Dan in is, the aisles. Dan's behind the camera right now, but he's on the sound for us and does an, a spectacular job. And we're just so thrilled to get back and work with your team and your crew and to see all of our friends in Orangeville. So can't, awesome. can't wait. Great. So again, everybody, uh, April 27th, it previews. It opens on the 29th of April and runs until the 15th of May. Um, get onto the website, theatorangeville.ca, and get some tickets. Coming up next, a really, really exciting guest, an up and comer in this community that you're gonna hear a lot of moving forward. Trust me. The first time we met was in first grade. I didn't know you yet, you didn't know me. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, soon enough we were in two different worlds, yeah. Next time we met was in high school. Science class, I thought it was so cool To think someone I hadn't seen in years Well, could make it easier to drop all my fears, yeah I never thought I'd see you again But we needed each other in the end Oh honey, I adore you You are my other half Cause Wow, was that a sensational, sensational piece of music or what? Lost Without You, created, written, produced, performed by our amazing next guest, Liv Lawrence. Liv, welcome. Thank you. I'm that so happy. song, when I first heard that, I encountered it on YouTube, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But when I first encountered it, I just went, oh, like I was blown away. It's really spectacular. I love, and that's your playing on it as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It is. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about. Now you're from Orangeville. Yes. You live in Orangeville. Yes, born and raised. <laughs> Sorry. Born and raised. Born and raised. I wish I could say the same, but born and raised here in Orangeville, and you are writing the most. Your lyrics are really something. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about that. Pro Where did it come from? Where did the desire to write come from? Well, I started out, I was never good at writing songs. Funniest part. Um, I started out not being able to write songs. You know, I had a note in my phone for like five years or so that just had little excerpts of songs, had no idea what I was doing, never actually went anywhere. But then 
During the pandemic, I started writing songs based on my feelings, and I really got in touch with my own emotions. Right. And eventually, I just started writing songs that popped up into my head or with my surroundings around me, just reminding me of stuff. So going through a lot of emotional stages helped me write a lot. So. Kind of just a weird question, because I'm, I'm always cu or I'm really curious, because I'm not a creative person at all in that way. And, and do you think, I mean, is it a function of you just getting it together or do you really think that these times the last couple of years of isolation of of not being able to to congregate and all that is that what really t got you got those juices flowing i think it was a mix of mix of both it was mainly just being kept to myself i had nobody else to talk to so i was just keeping all my emotions to myself so i could really understand them all but it was also just the element of finally progressing and wanting to get somewhere with my music i started working on it harder so. right it's a really common thing, you know, working because I work a lot with writers, playwrights and novelists and stuff like that. But um, as you may have gathered, I'm a talker. Yeah. I, I like to blah, 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 blah. Um, in fact, that's what most of my staff say what I do, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but um, that process of writing is a very, it is a very intensely personal one and a lonely one, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not, if you don't have a lot of life experiences outside the world with your element, you don't really have a lot of experience to put into a song. So I find it comes from a very emotional place for me. It's very personal and dear to me. So that's where it comes from. <laughs> well, that came across, like when I first heard that tune that we, that we just enjoyed, I, I went, I don't mean, please, perhaps, as I thought, this is a person who has really been out there and experienced a whole lot of life. And when I, when I discovered, you know, that, that you're brand new to this creative process, I was even more impressed. It's, it's really, it's, it's spectacular. Well, see, I've, I've been doing music my whole life, you know. I've just been doing it since I was a kid. We've always had instruments in the house. We had a piano from the moment I was born. So it's really just become intuitive for me. I started playing the piano, hitting the little keys at the beginning of my life, age two. I went into lessons for a bit and then in and out of whatever interests. Right and then I got, I garnered a bunch of my own interests in what I liked. And then I started building upon that and thinking I could make a career out of it. I've always wanted a music career. So, so this, is, this, is the road you're, this is the road you're going down. Yeah. Fantastic. Really, I, I, you're going to have tremendous, tremendous success because now what happens next? What do you, what, because I saw them, I experienced them on YouTube, but like, is it like the world of Spotify or like, what are your dreams that way? Do you want to perform, do you want to perform them live on stage? What? That's definitely a dream in there. Um, my main goal is actually going to school right now. I want to head off to a music school called Harris Institute. It's oh, up okay. in Toronto. It's a private school for music. I want to actually learn production and audio engineering, and I want to go into that as a main thing, and I also want to do my own music on the side. I feel like I could gain a lot more experience in school, a lot more knowledge and a lot more software and everything to help me yeah, on my own adventure. To, so to, to figure that out. Well, how's about this? I promise you, yeah, I'm doing it on camera, that when you're ready and you want to do something live on stage, Yeah. Can we do it here first? Absolutely. Super, we will do it right here on this stage. I'd love to. And we will have you sharing this music. So right now, it's people can experience your music on through YouTube, is that? Yes. So like is Spotify like, a, like I, don't, I don't know anymore what, what happens with this kind I, of music now. I'm looking into it. It definitely goes on Spotify. Every use, everybody uses Spotify at this right. point. But YouTube's my main focus right now because I have to get a bunch more songs out. I want to form an album of some sorts before I even venture out. And then I have to talk to a bunch of people for legal things. And <laughs> it's a whole bunch of issues. And I'm going to wait till after I finish all my stuff. To yeah, for sure. <laughs> get sorted. Yeah, it's not just about wanting to perform. There's all of that other stuff around it. Well, really exciting to meet you, Liv. Thank you so much for coming in. And thanks for... Thanks for sharing your music with us. You have a real gift, and I'm serious. When 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 you feel that you want to, you know, step out to center stage and share it, we would love to have you here. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me. I've been on this stage a few times before, not in the spotlight. I've done a few concerts here. I've also been a lot in the audience side of things, but I'd definitely love to step it up and perform in front of the stage. Listen, you're everybody you're going to everybody in Orangeville and area is going to be so proud of you because you the you are just going to I know it I know you're just going to you're just going to roar like with it so thank you but yeah no but center stage 
that's where you need to be. That's where you deserve to be with that I'd talent. I'd be honored to. I'm honored to be here in the first place. Oh, <laughs> Thank you but so much. We're going to make it happen. All right. Okay? Okay. Okay. On that note, why don't we check out another of Liv's tunes called Okay. Okay? Okay. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Track of time I lost track. 